Smooth Jazz stepping here on OhSoSmoothRadio.com, broadcasting live from the mobile studios here in Boston, Massachusetts. With Master Controls located in Cleveland, Ohio, this Sunday, January 22nd, this is show number four. As we always play good music for good people, I'm your musical host, Mixmaster Rudy Dotton, and we're uh, getting ready to go live and speak to uh, the legends, legends in their own right, uh, Tony Dow and L.C. Henderson. And um, as I... Get them in here into the studio. Come on in, guys. Come on in. Come on in. Come on in. What's happening, guys? What's happening? Hello. Hello. Hey, hey man. Hey, this hey, is, hey. We got a we got a long road ahead of us, but we got a great book in front of us. It's called Steppin', A History of the Dance. Welcome, Tony Dow. What's going on, man? <laughs> Thank you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. This has uh, been a journey for you. I know we've talked uh, extensively, man, for the last couple of years, and I know you wanted to put some things on hold because I was trying to get you to come on before. You said, Rudy, no, nope, no, nope, no, nope, I, I mean, I got something coming up. I got something I'm working on. So here we are, and this, it, 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 <laughs> this is it, man. This is it. Congratulations on your book. I've got it right here. I got a couple of Thanks. copies, man. So yeah, man, this is this is it. This is this is nice and thick too, man. It's got a hey, two hundred and something pa- over almost three hundred pages, right? Yes. Yeah, two hundred ninety-five. Oh, okay. Yep. LC, what's going on, my brother? LC, hey, hey, hey. <laughs> what's going on, y'all? <laughs> That's my man. Oh man, you all go way back. How far do you all go back? Well, oh. we start telling our age when we do that. that that's okay, man. Y'all, y'all, y'all look like a million dollars, man. You wouldn't even know it. Yeah. LC is back. He's, he's a good brother. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Very yeah. instrumental in um, the direction, the dance, you know, after a certain while. He was necessary. Well, let me, let me say this. Tony Dow was there when I got there and that was inspirational seeing his crew come out on a Friday night in all white <laughs> and just put on a performance at venue after venue and we were just blown away I just I don't, I don't know man it, it just it, watching that and taking stepping to another level who I tell people that's where the new school came from, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Right. And I, I agree. I, I always tell people that he was a part of the, that's what I'm speaking about. It was uh, a movement at the time and uh, young people coming in and they looked to the LC and Tony Dow direct them we did and um it was come right you know that's what i I love about lc we had great camaraderie it was not uh uh one for 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 one we were for each other that's right you know and we helped each other lc was specific about the way he taught and it was he taught the beginners he taught them how to really get their their start and i was on a higher level with teaching so what we did was we came together it was people that came to me i let them take a couple of steps and say okay i need you to go over to lc (laughs) <laughs> Get yeah, yourself and when involved. they took a couple of steps more, I said, "Okay, now you can go back and tone it down." Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And it was a beautiful yeah. thing. And we started uh, having the younger instructors and stuff follow our lead with that because it wasn't so harmonious in the beginning. What you year, know, what year are we talking, Tony? 
Well, that's... we're talking the mid '90s to early 2000s. Okay, just to yes. get just give folks a reference of where you where you all at in the time zone. Okay. Yes. All right. That was the explosion of the new people. Yes. Yeah, and um, it was kind of like people were trying to get their own people. So, you know, you weren't necessarily trying to help the next guy get customers. <laughs> <laughs> but it was great with me and LC and what we found in each other. Also, you know, he had his people and I had mine and we were, him and I were some of the top ticket sellers in Chicago because we had yes. crews behind us and um, we were uh, we were treated special because of that by the promoters. It's a beautiful time. Yes, and um, Elsie, you did you both have separate locations to do this, or did you all join force, forces and work work together? How did that How did that happen? No, well, we we had we had separate venues. He he had his basement. I had mine, okay. and I'm gonna just throw in a few more names. See. Back then, the people we had to watch probably, you know, for the most part didn't teach. But for the most part, if you went to Don, uh, uh, Donnie Davis, Claudel Jackson, Tony Dow, mm -hmm. Elsie right. Henderson, Andre Blackwell, Dave Max, right. you know, and Tick would just go to everybody class. He just wanted to help everybody. You cool. you knew the dance. You got the dance. Because you went with this main seven or eight core people. That's so, true. Yeah, yeah. So did we come together? Yes. Uh, I knew it was gelling when Tony Dow, that's probably was the second instructor award that I got. The first one was by John Muhammad at Condessa Del Mar. And Tony Dow turned around and gave we had about maybe 20 instructors in Chicago. That's true. So, so with, 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 with that, um, gave us an award. yeah, you, you're going, he at, gave us an award. Okay. We lost you for a second. Repeat that again. That last couple yeah, of, yeah, yeah. I said, Tony Dow gave only seven awards out only seven because we were the one that was impacting. We had to throw Lady Margaret in there. She has uh, stood the test of time. Yeah, for the female instructor. We had Sharita back. Then she came along a little later, but he only gave out seven because the other instructors wasn't, I think they was out more so for the money. And Correct. did money come? Yeah, but you don't put the money first. You put the art of learning the dance first and the money will come. Just teach the dance the right way. Don't be keeping your students in. Well, I'm just going to keep them in. I'm not going to go out on the set. No, we we said we got to take you on the set to show what we're teaching you is what you see out on the set. So we wasn't scared to lose no student because we they went to everybody else's class anyway. Mm -hmm. We didn't that's, care. That's the truth. And, you know, what, what, what LC is speaking on right now is the infantile stages of teaching this dance to the masses. Because we hadn't figured out the right formula. We were all just, you know, it came, it started coming. So we were there to accommodate. And as that happened, we figured out how to make this thing work. So that would be that would bring me to this chapter that talks about the mechanics. Yes. The mechanics of the culture, the things that work inside the culture to keep it looking as pretty as it does. <laughs> but that was really those right. those instructors, uh Dave Lomax, Andre Blackwell, Margaret, Margaret. One thing I can say about Lady Margaret is she's a fighter. You know, she she fought for her position. You know what I mean? And it was it was just due. It's like you all are not going to continue to look over the women. Give us a shot. And she was very verbal about that. And she was necessary. Yes. Yes. 
Yes. Because even though we had women in the class, we we follow and Tony Dow, that was watching his crew was inspirational for me as a man. Cause I he's his guys, all his guys were required to follow. If you want right. to know how to lead, okay, but you're gonna learn how to follow too. So you Correct. wouldn't be doing all that crazy stuff with the women, you know. So it was late, it was nice that Lady Margaret was there. So we can say, here, go to Lady Margaret so you can get the feminine finesse of the Absolutely. dance. We follow like guys. We follow, Absolutely. but we follow like guys. We don't follow That's like true. women. So, yes. Okay. So, very, very good stuff you're talking about. Right in there. Okay, so chapter five talks about the dance. And the first few sentences here says, uh, the 70s brought in not only a new decade and a new era, but a change from everything that had happened before in the music that told the stories of our lives. What was coming about at this time was a very prevalent in the music industry and well as well as the history. What did you, what, what were you referring to? Uh, what now, what, what was glad, this, the story about that chapter? I'm, I'm glad that you put that right in there at this time because I want to say that, you know, um, there's been a lot of criticism about the new school coming along. You know, there was a lot of uh, re uh, rejection. You know, there was a lot of stuff going on with that. You know, everything was already in place. So I'm glad you brought that up because the first time this ever happened to the culture was in the 70s. That was the first time new school came about. <clears throat> they, were, they were used to dancing like they were doing in the 50s and 60s. The bop had changed over to stepping. Oh, okay. But it had not changed over to stepping until the young people got hold to it. And it was James Brown's music that was the base of the change. So you got the guys that came in that wasn't from the 60s, you know, the uh, George Macaroni's, Lil Mike's, Taboo's, Taz Skippy's, all these guys. They brought in a new explosion to the dance. So what you see today now with the get down that you see everybody doing, the man on man type of dance thing, that's what was ushered in. But they were doing it with the girls. And it was a fast pace. These were young kids doing this dance. And they said, later for the way y'all do this dance, we're going to bring our own stuff in. And that's what happened. That was the first time the culture experienced a new wave. So this that me and LC has been talking about was the second generation of that. It was not the original. So them guys in the 70s. And what I meant by that statement that you just spoke about was just that. <clears throat> Everything that had happened before, it was a, a, a group of young people that were uh, you know how young people are, man. They come in and they're going to bring their own. They're going to change this whole thing around that whatever's going on here. And the good thing about it was the, the, the steppers, the dancers, the boppers, the walkers that were already established, they did not um, push them aside. They let them come in and do their thing and they kept doing their thing. And eventually we all gelled together. So that, that's going to bring us to chapter eight, I believe. It's going to say uh, the transitions. The first time I became aware of anything about Chicago stepping was not bopping, was when I was eight years old and a family member showed me how to go to the right. Go to the left, go, go to, to the right, right then kick, kick, kick in, in the, the middle. middle. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> Yep. <laughs> Explain. Yep. Expound. LC, he's laughing because he knows exactly what I'm talking about. Yeah. Because it wasn't no, really no count. You just or do this. Yeah, yeah. It wasn't, that, it wasn't that structure. So you just mimic what they say do. So right. then you become creative in the time that it takes to go to the left, go to Absolutely. the right, then kick, kick. <laughs> you can do something else and come back on the kick, kick. 
So and that's where the style came in. That's what. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. We getting yes. it. We getting it. Okay. All right. Um. And so you have on chapter ten. I'm skipping over some chapters so we can get kind of get through the book a little bit. That's 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 good. What you're doing. That's good. Thank you. Thank you, Tony. Uh, chapter ten talks about the fort. Wh- what is the fort? Are you talking about? You being in the basement parties and school parties like the uh, visitation school and the Phillips High, interacting with your cousins and friends as far as stepping was concerned. Is that what you're saying? So, I know you've heard of the dungeon. Yes, I have. Everybody's heard of the dungeon, correct? Yes. So, the fort was an actual place. It wasn't uh, somebody's basement or whatever. The fort was where Jeff Fort, uh, that was head of the Blackstone Rangers gang. This is this was their fortress. This is where they dwelled and they threw parties. And it was the opposite. Everything about it was the opposite of the dungeon. Okay. And it was at the same time. It was the other place that allowed kids to come in and dance. You know, Sam Chapman had the dungeon. He would be at the Cayman's Club and, you know, on the west side. He 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 dealt with a lot of the youth. But the Stones also let the youth in and to dance as well. So it was two different sides of town, two different gangs represented, and two different styles of the dance. Wow, back then. Oh, yes. And, you know, I grew up in the middle of all this, and um, that's this that I wrote about, man, it's phenomenal. It was just that phenomenal to me. It blew my mind in a way till I always said I was going to write about this. And I experienced both places. And it was, uh, you, you just had to have been there. The closest you could get, to being there is this book and how detailed I wrote about it. Well, speaking about details, you, you mentioned it here on chapter 11, the Dusty Record Convention. What was that about? So that was Herb Kent, Richard Pagee. Yep. These, were, these were the Dusty guys. These were the, the grandfathers and the godfathers to the culture, you know. And <clears throat> The Dusty Record Convention was thrown by Richard Pagee. And he would have this convention. It would usually be in one of the St. Margaret's or St. Sabine, one of the big uh, Catholic schools. That's right. That's right. On on, uh, St. Margaret's on 99th. 99th. Nobody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you went back then, you didn't know about that. A lot okay. of the new people would never know, but that right. was one of the Catholic. Uh, we did it in their little hall. Yeah, right. So there what it is. was, you bring your own food, you bring your own bottles. They serve setups, beer and wine, and it's it's just all about everybody coming together to do this in the way that it was done at your home the way we were all raised. We were raised on good music, good food, and and just dancing and enjoying it. So the Dusty Convention was an extension of that. It's the place to die for, to go to get the real good music. You know, you don't have, they're not price gouging. Um, And some of the best dancing that you will ever see in your life. I mean, I've seen these people do this dance in a way that I never could have gotten the experience unless I went to this convention. Okay. Tony, you, you left Chicago. What year did you leave Chicago and, re- and relocate it? January of 2008. Okay. But you, you come back and forth now and then, right? Oh, all the time. Good, good, good. All right. So that's when you do come back, uh, chapter 16 talks about the nightlife. So the nightlife, the fashion turned up seriously in the early 80s. Things were different in the culture. A huge portion of the high school students went on to college and got jobs. Some left the stepping and dance culture. Some went to jails. Some passed on. But uh, 
we still here. That's that's a that's a very touching uh, touching uh, chapter. Uh, Tony, what, can you expound on that, please? Oh my goodness, the nightlife. So, I'll just be honest. You know, uh, the people that I watch. You know, the younger you are, the more impressionable you are. And I saw, you know, George Macaroni. He used to run with my cousin. They used to. Uh, George Macaroni, Taboo, Johnny Boy, Pete Frazier, all these guys took um, tailoring in school. They used to have the class, LC, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, and that's true. they learned, yeah, they learned how to make the suits and stuff. So I go back to a, a preteen, early teen, and George Macaroni, he was one of the guys that would come to our home and he would tell me, you keep dancing, man. You got something, you know. So I, all I'm trying to say is a lot of my mentors, a lot of the people that I watched and idolized as a kid growing up, they've passed on. Some of them passed on in jail. So this wonderful culture that we see right now and we're enjoying, you know, if you take it a few years back, man, we had blood, sweat, and tears to get here. You know, a lot of people don't understand that part of it, but we go a long way back with this culture and this dance. So it's a lot of people that was very instrumental in this dance to get to where it is today, and they've moved on. A lot of them names will never even be mentioned you know, that was another point why I tried to name as many people as I could think of in the book. Because this is the only recognition we'll see. So, yeah. Elsie, you want to talk? Me talk, talk, talk yeah, something. go ahead, Elsie. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Let me ask you something. Did you, you know? You, you're completely in the dark, Elsie. You're completely in the dark. He's all right. <laughs> I can hear him. We can log <laughs> <I am. laughs> Okay. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. There you go. Uh, did you know Monroe Allen? Monroe, yes. Yeah, Monroe. okay. See, now I come from the south suburbs. I come from the suburbs with Fireman Smitty, uh, Smitty. Monroe Allen, the guy that was head of the snow gophers. Uh, I forget, but he would have his snow gopher stepper set downtown, six, seven, eight hundred people. Correct. So I start hanging. I started in the south suburb and started hanging in the city. Well, that's why I came across you, you know, as I started yeah. hanging in the city, hanging with Black Mary. And like yeah. I said on the show before, Black Mary was the first set I went to where whether it was walking or stepping, they danced in a circle. If it was regular right. stepping music, they ste they went in a circle like it was walking, but it was that, stepping music. That blew me away. That, that's a that fact. Blew me away. That's a fact. I'm like, and they, wow. they, they used to do that in the fort too. They used to go around. Okay. The fort oh, okay. Stepping. Okay. They were emulating okay. their elders. Yes. You follow me? Yes. The yes. Smitty, Fireman Smitty, Fireman Smitty was a judge when I won the $10,000 pot. Okay. Now, the thing about that was I grew up under them. He he lived behind my parents. Okay. Wow. So we're talking, you know, we go back in this thing, LC. You know what I mean? Yes. Yes. Because Monroe was with four plus four, and they used yeah. to have they said on Monday night at the La Mirage. Now, the unique thing about La Mirage, when they mentioned it, Pete didn't know what it was because he was on a break. The first couple of years when the world's largest came, I never knew Pete. Then when I see this dude, I said, "Man, this dude is fire. Where he come from?" Oh, he yeah. was on a hiatus, you know. Somehow went on a hiatus, Rudy. You yeah. know what I'm saying? I always and laugh. Then they come back I always and, laugh and so, when you when you tell me that. You always say, "Yeah, Rudy. Yeah, yeah, I didn't know yeah, nothing so, about no Pete French." Yeah, so I'm like, "Who is you?" He like, "Who is you?" Right. I'm like, you right. know, you know, but 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 I said this dude is bad. So anyway. Mm -hmm. That was the first semifinals of the first year Mary had the uh, contest, the semifinals. Uh, the La Mirage was the first place on Torrance in Cayman City. That was the first semifinals because she, she did it everywhere. 
She, she did truth. it on the west side at the Rose. Uh, she did it at Mr. Ricky's Note. It was just different places. So every side of town could be represented. So it wasn't that no one true. place. Yes. Yeah. These are the pioneers of how the culture grew. Yes. A lot of people don't understand that this thing would have died. But it was certain people in place. Sam Chapman was another. He was in place to make yes. sure that it grew. Now, you said Pete was on hiatus. So Pete and I <laughs> go back to the early 80s at Chick Ricks. That's where I... Okay. I had heard of Pete because they were all, all my cousins, all us grew up in the projects, but they're older than me. So all I right. met him at Chick Ricks and Mr. Ricky loved Pete Frazier, man. Pete yes. was one of the guys who had his stuff together very young. You know what I yes. mean? Yeah. Yes. So he was likable to the elders. Yes. And Mr. Ricky cuffed him, man. And he would win those contests at Chick Ricks and all that. And you're right. Right after Chick Ricks, Pete took an hiatus to get his game on another level. Yes. So the did whole you know tale Richard? Was, did you know Rich? How well? I ain't gonna say did you know? How well did you know Richard Willis? Because we was all there at, at the Chick Rick House on the uh, on first Sunday of the month. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Oh, Five, six hundred people talking, upstairs, talking, downstairs. Richard yeah. Willis and Brad. Peterson and all of yes. these guys. Yes. These were the original set throwers. Yes. And uh Plug and John. Oh. <laughs> That's how I met him. He was plugging my car. I'm like, hey, what that you putting on my windshield? <laughs> I'm plugging John, man. Oh, okay, give me that then. Give, give, give me he had two or three sets of pluggers in his hand. You know, give me it's all of them then. Yes, you know, I'm yes. new to it. So that's how I met Plugging John. He was plugging my car. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> These are the people that got us to where we are today. Right, LC? Yep. yep. So, so that brings us to Chapter 17, because we just hit on it a little bit. The world's largest steppers contest. I remember looking back, there was something brewing. There was a rumble under the ground, a slight rumble. We didn't really know what was coming. Things were rolling on a high level and the nightclubs were getting money all around the city from stepping. This thing was growing. We started to have social clubs here and there, and plenty of money was going into stepping. Tony, that's the, that, man, here we are. <laughs> 2023. Yeah. Man, this, incredible look, to me. It's just incredible to me. So what you're looking at now, I had uh, one of my students ask me just yesterday. He said, what's going on, Tony? He said, has it always been like this? Or is this, I said, what are you talking about? He said, the interest in the dance. I said, it's always been like this. Yes. It's been yes. growing ever since the seed been planted. Yes. So all of that that happened in the 80s, it was, it was, bound, something was bound to happen. A lot of, a lot of the clubs was, you know, that whole strip, uh, from 26 down to 12th Street on Michigan was our tinsel town. Cotton Club, Hero, Shigrix, all these clubs, we would go back and forth. Yes. And it was time for something to happen on a economical level for us. You know, it was time for things to turn into an industry. And that's what the world's largest brought into the game. It brought hope and prosperity and future. Like we had never been, nobody never looked at us as an entity to pay us. You know, you would get a steppers contest that would go anywhere from $50 maybe to 200. And that was, that was the, the whole ride of it. It was no more, no less. It was, we had never had no one take time out to pay us to do this dance like this. And, you know, a lot of people say uh, they were getting the money and all that. No, we had never got paid for this dance on that level until the world's largest came. So it gave us interest. I knew we was gaining momentum 
when those promoters, like Tony mentioned earlier, the promoters will come to us mm -hmm. and say, I want you to sell tickets to my set because they want more people so they know we got students. Our classes right. were packed. I had two classes, then I had four classes. Two right. on Saturday, two on Sunday. So they wanted tickets to Preston Hawkins. You remember Preston? Yes, Preston, yes. Preston yes. would give me 10 tickets. Yeah, me too. He said, here. He said, I don't care what you do with them. <laughs> you can sell them. My people would like to see your people come and dance. Absolutely. You can sell them and get $5. You can give them away free. He said, please, just take these tickets and come to my set. So that's how we knew we was getting good, kind of like uh, Don Cornelius. He knew was he was getting good with Soul Train when the artist started calling him to come on the show. Absolutely. So when the promoter started coming to us, Chicago. Right here. Chicago. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Now we said, oh, we got we some had value. Made it. We not only, we yeah, made we made it. <laughs> you know, made. we making our little change oh, in the goodness. class, wasn't charging That's that right. much. But we That's knew right. we had made it when the promoter started coming to us which I'm going to just touch on this a little bit because the focus is on Tony in this book. But that's why me and Donnie formed a True Steppers connection. Right. Because we said, well, man, we we selling tickets for them. Let's merge together and do our own thing. You know what I'm saying? We draw, we can draw four or 500 people. You know what I'm saying? So that's what spurred. It just snowballed it. That world's largest. And these promoters, it got handed to us in one fashion or another, like I say, they're giving us tickets. So, like, I'm gonna tell you this, and I'm gonna give it back to Tony. Somebody posted a month ago, <laughs> and I seen you know you see somebody mention you, and I said, I wonder what's this about. And I said, you know, sometimes you don't want to get involved with what they're saying if they're going back and forth <laughs> on Facebook. You're like, yeah, look, let me see what they're saying. It just, I might click like, I might click nothing. You just get out of it. Right. So somebody was saying, I'm sick of these new instructors. Now, this is what they're saying. They said, if it don't have Tony Dow, LC Henderson, Dave Max, uh, Tick Man, Johnny Davis. They said, if we, yeah, you saw. They said, if they don't have those names attached to it, they said, you're wasting your money. <laughs> you're wasting your don't, I'm not going. Yeah. So, 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 yeah. so you're talking about first stringers. Because you have first stringers, LC? There you go. First, first stringers as far as teaching. Because, see, right. our our seniors, there wasn't they wasn't teaching. Fireman right. Smitty Monroe, they they didn't teach. So we are first stringers as far as taking this thing abroad. That's we we took it everywhere. Dave Mack was out in California. Even That's I thought right. Bruce Dyer in the mix. That's the they truth. Was, they was taking it. We started taking it. They sending for us. Milwaukee, yes. Cleveland, last on first. Then here comes Sherry with her crew from Detroit. Yes. So that's what you call first stringers. We're first stringers as far as instruction. We was the first one because the one preceded us, they didn't teach. You know, the they weren't. The yeah. Truth. And this is, you know, when you were speaking, when you said, look, this is all about an in the book, LC. This is not, this is about us. That's what I wrote it about. It's about us. It's about what we done. You know, yeah. I always uh, line up the stepping industry right alongside the music industry. And the way the people at Motown were some of the pioneers in getting our music to blend in as American music, not black music. Very good. Very good analogy, you know, Tony. That's a good that correlation. That was a yes. big deal. Yeah. And so what LC is speaking about is how we were the ones who put this thing on our back and carried it over till now. It's facts. Can't get, yeah. yeah. Let, me, let, let me tell you this. Let me tell you this. A line of fish. I forget where he moved to. Yeah, he's he down somewhere, I believe, Atlanta. Okay. He, he pulled me in. This is about 15 years ago. He said, come in, LC. Come in. I'm saying, oh, man, what, what did he want? He said, he said, man, look. He said, I don't know what you're doing. I don't know how you're doing. He said, I can't teach. But don't let these fools downgrade you or talk you down or right. discourage you. 
He said, he said me, my name and your name only. Not saying we were the only ones, mm -hmm. but he says, you all are teaching this dance so good. It's good to be able to go to another state and dance with other girls who would I've been there before and they couldn't dance. So the majority dance the girls I dance with either came from your class or Tony Dow's class or Donnie Davis. So that's what they told me. This is what Fish told me. This is what Fish told it's me. Cool. He said, and you know, keep doing what you're doing. I got cousins in every state of the United States. He said, and y'all doing the good job. You don't stop doing what you're doing. That's what Lionel Fish told me about 15 years ago. Wow. It, yeah. it, it's, it's the truth. And, you know, the thing about it is, you know, now he's not saying all the other instructors weren't going out and doing. No, everybody was doing what they do. People like LC and myself, our names proceed. Our names proceed because we brought a lot of them along that started going and doing whatever. So it's all it became international. And we were the ones that was going out. And it was a beautiful thing to grow the dance in that way. We got to meet all these people yeah. around the country, man. You know, you got people inviting you into their city and into their homes. They cooking meals for you and stuff, man. They making sure you are right. It, it's yeah. just like the music. And, you know, we're treated like celebrities. Yes. And look, 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 Rudy, Rudy, I told you. They, they welcome. So... Later on came the hotels, but these they were yes. living in five yeah. bedroom houses. That's Here's the, the key to the BMW. The That's mall right. down the street. I'm going to work. We want to keep you past Sunday. We want you to stay Monday too. Here's the key to the BMW. Here's the alarm code to the house. They, they introduced you to, to the to the single yes. women and their family and everything. Yes, yes. They trusted you. Yes. Here's food in the refrigerator if you want to yes. cook. You want to sleep all day, get some rest from the weekend. They gave us keys to BMW business so we could drive to the mall. Yeah. That, that, he's speaking nothing but 100% facts. Unbelievable. You all were treated like celebrities. I, I love that. Yes. Yeah. It's so, all yes. in the book. Hey, hey Rudy. Hey, Rudy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> <I, man. laughs> Man. We were so, champions. Man. We were champions. <laughs> yeah, y'all were champions, man. That's honest, God's truth. Well, in, cl in closing, there's a there's a there's a, a paragraph in here that I, I wanted to read, and it's really nice, man. I I'm gonna um where is it? Okay, here we go. Uh, this is in the the last. This is the last chapter of the book. Uh, it says uh, the culture of Chicago Steppen has a nostalgic aroma as well as a very safe and comforting feeling of everlasting existence. The music will always dictate a certain feeling or atmosphere. This culture has created friends, family beyond measure. It has taken many heights beyond compare. The overall spirit base of this culture have been one of togetherness, joy, acceptance, mentorship, wealth, and personal health. If you are a part of this dancing culture, God bless you. If you haven't had a chance to be part of this culture yet, you're welcome to join us now. This this is heavy. Yeah, yeah. Tony, see, beautiful. That, that's book. a good. That's a. I'm glad he wrote that book. Now this is what I'm hearing. Other ones. I'm I'm a right with me one. That's why he said a history of stepping. Because everybody might have a history saying similar things. That's Come on, Come yeah, on. Yeah, yeah. Everybody got a history. I might you come out eventually preaching. with a one in two or three years. He said a history. He didn't say the history. He's yeah. telling us his life pattern that involves all of us. And everybody's book will include the instructors that we named earlier. It should if they was involved with it growing in the nation, you know, but we don't get acknowledged for that all the time. Ever since John Muhammad gave us a, an award, uh, Tony Dow gave us an award. We don't get that. Not that we require an award because we just love doing what we're doing. Yes. We love it for it to carry on. But a lot of us don't give us 
uh, the acknowledgement. Dick, Dick Correct. Well, and, I know, I know that this you know, is, this and it's okay. Yeah, we don't well, do it yeah. for that. Well, I know Absolutely. that Stepaganza no. always gave out awards, didn't they? Get, I'm sure they, I'm sure they Ooh. gave out instructions. Stepaganza, didn't they give out in, 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 in awards for instructors? Yeah, no, we're we're this is we're talking. He's talking before all of this. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, this, before this all of this, no, okay. no, I, I, got one, I got one from GDI. I got one from GDI. Okay. Yeah, yeah, moving forward. Right. But, yeah, but, but before, like Tony said, yeah. before all of these branches start, yes, uh, okay, hosting yeah. weekend events, you know, yeah, yeah. before yes. GDI was started, yes. before I even met Sarah, you know, right. so absolutely, you know, absolutely, yeah. and yeah. But, so, it's so, true. Like what he's saying is. It, it it all was recognition helped us grow. It gave us um, a sense of pride and stuff. So when he say Muhammad, he gave me LC all us our first award, and that let me know this was necessary. So I was yes. next up in line. I got we got to pass out these awards to keep this thing growing and let these people know that they're doing the right yes. thing. Yes, yes, absolutely. Yeah, and, and I told Rudy before, Tony, if I get somebody come up to me today and they say, hey, granddaddy, now, I don't know them, but that means that they learn from a student of mine. See, so, yeah, see, see, see that? So if they come from Cliff, all the Cliff students come up and say, hey, granddaddy, <laughs> or they come from Brian Patterson, Hey, granddaddy, if they come from tall Rick, hey, granddaddy, you know, then I know they came from one of my guys or one of my girls, you know. Still so, yeah. still considered first stringers, correct? So. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So Tick Man, he was in the basement. We working out and all that, and he said he got this young lady. He's going to bring her by, and she's fantastic. And it was Danielle. And wow. He had been working with her or whatever, and, she, and me and her, we fell in love. We, I'm teaching a class. I left the class over there. Those poles in my basement, me and her was running around the poles, chasing each other, doing footwork and stuff because she's so talented. And yes, long story short, that is her nickname for me, Granddaddy. And it's because she come from Tick, he come from me. Wow. Yes. Nice. So it's exactly what you're saying. And it's a yes. beautiful thing, isn't it? And here's, here it is, Tony. These people today would never know Lee, uh, Danielle or Lynn. Remember Lynn? Lynn. Spinning Lynn. Yeah, yeah. No. Lynn. Lynn, Lynn. They, they'll never see Lynn or Sharita or That's a right. girl from my class. She Casper taught her, but she came to me to get refined. Veronica. Veronica. They, 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 would, ne they, they would never see them. They're, they're married, having babies. They, they, they would on. never see They've them. They've moved on. They've moved on. Yeah. Now, you know, they, you spoke of they did their 10 years, and they gone. 10, That's 15 years, they gone. You spoke of Lynn. Lynn is a part of Step in History, just like the uh, yes. Alexander brothers, because yes. there are three sisters that won in the world's largest steppers contest. Her, Sherry, and uh, Margette. They're sisters. Yes. yes. So, so I wrote about all this stuff. And this has been really great sitting here with you, LC uh, and, and Rudy. I, I've had a, a great time reminiscing about this stuff. Well, yes. reminiscing um, August 30th, 1986. That's when you won the $10,000? 96. 96, I'm sorry. 96, it looks like an eight yeah. there. Yeah, 96. Okay. Yeah. Yes. So, Tony, we, we I, I wish I had a clip of that, but I do have... Uh, Another video with you and uh, Dominique, um, two thousand no, not Dominique, uh, Shawnee's Shawnee Simmons. You and Shawnee's were performing um, and competing at the world's largest uh, two thousand fifteen. You remember that? Right. Yes, a few years ago. Yes, a few years ago at Telly Park. At Telly Park. So we're gonna run that, and after that, we're gonna go back to some to, to some more music. But I just wanted to say thank you, Tony, for taking the time out of your day to, to come and join us today and uh, give us a history of uh, a history of, of the dance, your version. And uh, people can pick up your book. It's available on um, Amazon. Yes. yes. Okay. All right. Hold LC, on. I love yes, you, man. Sir. My brother, I love man. you too. I, hey, I, hey, bro. Hey, bro. <laughs> if, if we got the energy left in us. <laughs> I'm 62 now. Now I'm 62. I'm I'm, I'm getting tired. You know my. But yeah. look, 
Yeah, if we can do a magnificent seven reunion. Oh my it, god! It, it's need. It's what? Need, it's needed. It's needed. Cause these talk about pop up guys six years. You talk about Dave, Dave Max these and the rest people, of you all. What? Man, they what? Not, they know they don't have it. You know, Tony <laughs> formed the Magnificent Seven, and it probably was more than that in there. So wherever you stayed, you are in the dance, beginner, intermediate, male, female. You just go to the section you wanted to. It was the greatest you, workshop you, in the history yeah, of the yes. coast. <laughs> yes. Man, and I'm yes. gonna I'm gonna bring it right back. I love what you said hey, about you explained it all. You said he said it's a history. If everybody started writing their books and stuff, this thing will come out. It's a puzzle, and we all have a piece yes. of the puzzle. There Thank you, you go. brothers. Hey, so much. Yep. All right. All right, you guys. Uh, Elsie Henderson, Tony Dow, the author of Steppin', A History of the Dance, available on Amazon. Make sure you get your copy today. Uh, so we're going to run this uh, this video here. Um, I, I think it's outstanding, personally. It's, it's, it's going to be something. So here we go. God bless you all. We'll see you all soon. Right. All right. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. All You're right. welcome. Later. I'll see you all right. On, yeah. All right, Tony. I'll... All right.
smooth jazz step, good music for good people. The show plays a collection of contemporary jazz, yes. neo soul, and R&B. Smooth jazz step, 5 p.m. in the east, 4 p.m. central, and 2 p.m. Pacific. Sunday, Mix Master, Rudy Dot. Streaming on smartphones, tablets, computers. Oh, so smooth radio app. Download free. Oh, oh so smooth, smooth radio.com. Smooth jazz, jazz, jazz. Stepin.com.